Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Let's talk with Shana. I'm Shana, and I'm just going to give a second for everyone to join um, our live stream today. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about fixing winter skin. Uh, so I do see some people slowly joining. So hello, hello, everyone. Uh, come on in, come on in, as if this was a big <laughs> conference lecture room. Um, but while everyone joins us, I do just want to remind everyone, as always, our videos do have uh, a discount code. Uh, this week's discount code is 10% off your entire order. Uh, so that discount code is all capital letters, no spaces, Shay, just like my name. And that'll give you 10% off everything in your order. Uh, so I do see some more people joining. So I think we should be okay to... Um, start our conversation today about fixing winter skin. Uh, so we're just gonna go through all the different steps that you should really make part of your routine, specifically if you have dry skin, but even if you don't, because uh, in all honesty, it is just healthy practice to make sure that you are restarting your skin every now and again. You are getting rid of all of those dead skin cells that might be building up on your skin. Um, and overall, it just helps your skin breathe, be happy, be healthy. Um, so the very first step of your routine when it comes to fixing your winter skin is exfoliate. Now, a lot of people forget about this step, but it is super, super important to make sure that you are washing away everything that could be building up on the surface of your skin or in your pores, because um, dead skin can truly clog your pores and cause a lot of other problems. Um, now, a lot of people forget about their face when it comes to exfoliation. They think they'll do their body and they're done. But our foaming face washes have these nice little silicone bristles on the head so that you are able to do a gentle exfoliation of your face every single time you wash. Um, it is still good to do a deep one about once a week using a product that is specifically designed to exfoliate. Uh, but this is a nice little add-on to make it so that you're at least doing a little bit of a gentle deep cleanse every single time that you're washing your face just to get rid of those dry dead skin cells. Now when it comes to your body uh, we do have an amazing product uh, called the Uptan Face and Body Scrub so it's in the name you can also use it on your face so it's really great for that once a week deep exfoliation that I was just mentioning. Uh, but when it comes to your body, you're just going to want to take the exfoliation and just do small little circles with the product all over your body. And that's going to help lift any dry, dead skin cells from the surface of your skin, as well as deep down in your pores. Now, I know I am super, super guilty of this, uh, but there are two different ways that you can exfoliate your skin. Option number one is just taking some kind of abrasive, aggressive scrubby and just working away at your skin with that. Um, now, the reason why I say I'm guilty of this is because it isn't super great for your skin to do something that is abrasive or aggressive um, using any of those really rough textured scrubs to work up your dead skin cells is also going to irritate your happy, healthy skin cells. And this can cause a lot of damage within your skin as well as micro tears. It can end up pulling at your skin and causing more slack within your skin later down the line. Uh, so it's not something that you'll see right away, uh, but as you age, your wrinkles might become more and more prominent and it's because you're picking and pulling at it with something like an abrasive scrubby. Uh, so the second option when it comes to exfoliating your skin is to go with something that's an actual product that is designed to exfoliate rather than a tool. Tools tend to be the aggressive, damaging type of option and then products tend to be the more gentle chemical based exfoliation or something like a silicone brush they're gentle enough uh, just to work it up gently uh, but using something like our up tan face and body scrub would be a better second option now i do just want to remind everyone make sure that you're leaving your questions comments below i see lots of people celebrating and Agreeing with the loveliness of our face washes with the brushes. 
as well as our Uptan product. And thank you. I do really appreciate the, the kind words of calling me beautiful. <laughs> uh, now I do see we have a question here. Oh, goodness. Okay, one second. I can't quite see it all. It's not all loading for me. All right. Hey, I have a question. Is rubbing ice cubes on your face good for your skin? Actually, that's an amazing tip for your skincare routine is to have something like an ice cube. Um, it's super recommended that at the end of your face washing routine, you take either cold water, an ice cube, just something that's cold because that's gonna help close up all of your pores. That's gonna close everything back up for you. So that's a super duper suggestion when it comes to skincare. Um, I hate doing it, but I even recommend doing it at the end of your shower uh, because your body's covered in pores. So we wanna close those up as well. So at the very end, before you're gonna get out of the shower, just do a shot of cold water before you get out. Um, I hate doing it, but it's really, really good for your skin. Um, but you you can also use an ice cube. Um, if you find that that's a little bit too aggressive, because it could be for some skin types, if you have really sensitive skin, it might cause redness or irritation. Uh, just stick with the cold water. It's a nice substitute for that. Um, but yeah, that's an amazing question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, now, <clears throat> moving forward, our next step. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. We work from home and my little dog tends to want to be a part of the live right now. Um, <laughs> Alrighty, now I do see some more comments coming in. Oh, well, thank you, Cynthia, for sharing. I'm sorry that you're at work. Uh, luckily, our videos, they do save and post later. Uh, so you can still watch it later. You can still leave your comments and questions as you watch it. Uh, and someone will still be able to address it. So I am really sorry that you can't uh, join, but you can definitely still take a watch a little bit later. But thank you for that, Cynthia. Um, now, moving forward into our skin care routine, we have gone ahead and we have exfoliated. But our next step, a lot of people also forget about. This one's like spot treatments. So I know personally, I get a lot of irritation and redness on the ends of my elbows during the winter. Um, I don't know why, but that's just the place where my skin likes to be extra angry that it's dry outside. Um, so I wanna make sure that I'm do doing a spot treatment or giving a little extra care to this spot. Um, I know some people, they get it on like the heels of their feet. Um, but it tends to be pretty common around like joints, like elbows or knees. Uh, but you wanna make sure that you're doing some kind of spot treatment for it, giving it a little extra care. So when you're exfoliating, just go over it a little bit extra, give it a little bit more attention while you're doing that. But then after you're all done, it is also really great to make sure that you're going in with some kind of serum or soother. Um, so I really like to use the vitamin C serum mainly because vitamin C, it is specifically designed to help encourage your skin cell turnover. Uh, so that regeneration of new cells and getting rid of old dead cells, it's gonna speed up that process and encourage it a little bit more, as well as vitamin C is really, really good for scarring. I know I'm notorious for picking at things when they become itchy and irritating, so that in turn can lead to scarring. Uh, so overall, I always recommend the vitamin C when it comes to little spot treatments for, <laughs> uh, for troubled areas. And now once you've done a spot treatment with something like a vitamin C, you really wanna make sure that you're throwing SPF into your skincare routine. I know during the winter, we think the sun's gone away because it's cold and it's miserable, but the sun is still there, the UVs can still get you. So make sure that you are throwing in SPF into your skincare routine, specifically your face. If you're worried about any signs of aging, having SPF in your skincare routine really, really helps slow down those signs of aging. Uh, but do not forget the sun is still there <laughs> during the winter months. Um, now, just another reminder, make sure that you are leaving any questions. I know I'm kind of a fast talker, so <laughs> I'll try and slow that down a little bit, uh, but definitely make sure that you are leaving your questions, comments, um, even if you have any little tips or tricks uh, when it comes to winter skin, uh, definitely throw it in the comments. Um, <laughs> 
Wendy's comment about my little fur baby. Yes, he truly is my fur baby, um, but he likes to be noisy. He's a Pomeranian. It's in their blood. They're all noisy. You can't avoid it. Um, now, maybe in the summer, but not in the winter. I'm not sure which part because I was rambling a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, Debbie, I'm not sure which part we're talking about. We're talking about sunscreen. Um, I'm telling you. Honestly, your skin will thank you in the long run to include it in the winter as well. Uh, but it is super, super important to have sunscreen in your skincare routine. Um, I didn't do it for a really, really long time. Uh, but now that I've started doing it, I've noticed that my complexion's evening out more. Uh, my freckles, they're prominent in the way that I want them to. <laughs> Before, I had really, really dark freckles and they looked like acne uh, but now they just look like nice cute little freckles added to my face um, now I don't see any questions or anything like that so we are gonna move on to our very last step when it comes to our skincare winter routine and I'm sure you can guess what this last step is gonna be it is moisturizer 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 you really got to make sure you're getting that moisture in the skin uh, because it is not happening naturally in the world whatsoever winter just goes moisture nope that's mine and <laughs> you're not gonna have any moisture left in your skin uh, this step is super super important uh, but for buy wow products wow skin science products we have so many options when it comes to moisturizing so you're not really limited in what you can do um, so for our very first option we have the castor oil this one is one that I typically recommend for you to throw in your purse, take it with you everywhere, because uh, it's really light and it's not super greasy or anything like that. Um, and it's great for like, touching up throughout the day because um, castor oil can be used on your hair and your skin. So it's just a nice staple to have on you at all times that if your hair is feeling really dry and frizzy, because that can also happen during the winter, you can throw some castor oil in it. Or if you have certain spots like for example, my elbows that are really irritated and can't really go with just one moisture the day throughout the day. It needs touch-ups throughout. Having something like castor oil in my purse would be perfect because then I could just take a little bit, pump it on my elbows, and it will soothe and help with that moisture throughout the day. Uh, second option, if you are looking for something a little bit deeper than the castor oil, is we do have body lotions. We have three different body lotions all for different levels of moisturization. Um, if you want something that's super deep of a moisturization, you're gonna wanna go with the shea and cocoa butter. Um, if you want something that's more of a medium in the middle ground, you're gonna wanna go with the coconut milk and argan. That's the one that I really like. Um, and then there's the aloe vera. That one's super, super light. If you're someone who would say that you don't really have dry skin during the winter, you're totally fine, um, but you still wanna make sure you're getting moisture back into your skin, um, go with something like the aloe vera moisturizer. And of course, if you want a heavy duty moisturizer, I typically recommend to do this one like after showers, things like that, we have the body butters. Now, <laughs> I won't list them all because there are so many to choose from, uh, but I would encourage you to go to wowskinscience.com and under the body moisturizers, you'll find body butters. And there are so many options there, so many different scents, so many different um, benefits from each and every single one of them. Uh, so I won't bore you with <laughs> listing those on and on and on. Um, but definitely make sure to take a look at those when you have a chance. If you're really wanting like a heavy duty moisturizer, um, the difference between the body butters and the body lotions is the body butters are a little bit thicker um, and they do tend to go on your skin a little bit thicker. So in turn, they take longer to absorb, which is why I typically recommend for them to be put on after like a shower or something like that, uh, because then you can just sit around in like your robe or your towel as it dries. But if you're wanting something that you have in your morning routine, you just quickly lather it on and you're ready to go. Uh, something like a body lotion or the castor oil would be a better fit. Um, now, I do see some more questions popping up in the comments. Um, let's see here. And thank you to everyone who's sharing it. I've seen a few people tell me that they're sharing it. So I see Susan and then 
There's a few others. So thank you very much for that. And let me see if I can find any questions. Oh yes, summertime for cold showers. Yes, Angela, that is perfect to do uh, just to kind of cool off a little bit. Um, I'm north, so I don't have super, super hot summers, but I could not imagine how warm the summers are down south. So definitely do a cold shower at that point in time for sure. Um, I see a few more people just mentioning that they are at work, uh, but they're still watching. So <laughs> thank you for joining. Um, if you don't want to get trouble at work, you can also watch these videos later. They do save and post again afterwards. Um, <clears throat> Now I do see someone, Gail asking, what kind of dog do I have? I have a Pomeranian. Um, he is not within arm's reach, so I can't show you my dog. Uh, but if you go and watch my Good Morning with Shayna video, you'll see I have showcased him. Um, and I'm going to try and rope him into a live in a few weeks where we do an animal care with WOW skin products. Um, I'm going to try and rope him in a little bit there. So you'll get to see him if you join us in the next few weeks for that live event. Or you can go check out my Good Morning with Shayna. I have him all over the place in that one. Uh, but he's super cute. He's a super cute Pomeranian. <clears throat> Alrighty. Now, next question is, which is better, lotions or body butters? I personally am a sucker for body butter. Um, I really like a skincare routine that's just easy and simple. You can put it away and you can kind of forget about it when you're not doing it. So I like the body butters because I find that for my skin type specifically, um, the moisture ends up carrying me until my next shower. So I only really have to do them after my showers. Um, but I feel like with the body lotions, that more so is like a daily routine. So it just honestly depends on what kind of routine you want to build for yourself when it comes to moisturizing your body. Um, now, I do want to mention that um, all of this material that we discussed today um, is inclusive. It is suited for all skin types. So if you're someone who has super, super dry skin, um, this is something that is still applicable to you. And if you're someone who has barely any dry skin, you are blessed that the winter does not bother your skin whatsoever. This is still something that you're going to want to uh, incorporate into your body and skincare routine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, so I see Debbie saying, would not be without my WOW body butters and castor oil. Great chapstick. Oh, I never thought about using the castor oil as a chapstick, but you're totally right. It is natural, so it is something that is okay to put near your mouth. I wouldn't recommend fully consuming it, um, but it's definitely something that you can still use on your lips. Uh, so I never even really thought about that before, but... Yeah, that would be super helpful to use it as a chapstick. So thank you for that, Debbie. Didn't even I didn't even think about that. Um, and then Gail's asking, can you use the castor oil on your face? Absolutely. Um, when it comes to the castor oil, I do typically recommend just to warm it up a little bit if you have access to that uh, before using it. So that could be just running it under some warm water before you go and use it. Um, just because castor oil is naturally very thick, so sometimes it can be hard to use and maneuver. Um, so when it comes to your face, I do typically recommend to just warm it up because it'll go further that way and you won't have to use as much. Um, because we all know that when it comes to face care, you want to make sure you're putting on as little as possible uh, just to keep it light on your skin. So yes, castor oil, absolutely. Um, but I would say less is more when it comes to castor oil and using it on your face. I see Nicole mentioning that she is allergic to apples. Luckily, not all of our products have apples. Actually, quite a bit of our products don't have apples in it. Um, so the only product that you would really have to be cautious of is uh, like the apple cider vinegar products because those ones do have apple in them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I would say... If you are worried about an allergy, and this is just across the board for any allergy, uh, do take a look at our ingredients list. We do include that on every products page. Uh, so you can just take a look there and see if there is anything that you are allergic to in there before you purchase. And if not, we do have our 60 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and you find out that you are allergic to it and you've had an allergic reaction of some kind, um, you can always give our customer service a call and we can work with you there for that. 
Um, but this is across the board for any new product that you're trying, always do a spot check. Always, always. Um, so just pick a spot like on your arm or something like that, uh, that you can use the product and make sure that you're not going to break out like crazy once you've put it on your face or your scalp. Uh, so that's just kind of across the board for all allergies. Uh, but thank you, Nicole. Thank you for uh, throwing that out there. Luckily, we still have many, many products that you can use. Um, let's see. Oh, and I see um, Yvonne is saying that she loves her body butters. That's amazing. I love that. Um, I would love to hear what everyone's favorite body butter is in the comments. Um, my personal favorite is the banana pulp. I am a sucker for anything that smells like banana. Um, <laughs> now, let's see if we have any other questions today, because I'll be honest, we've worked through the... Uh, fixing your winter skin routine. So we've worked all our way through that. So you are going to make sure that you're exfoliating, spot treating, SPF, so sunscreen, and moisturizer. Um, so we've already kind of talked through all of that. So I won't bore you by going through it again, uh, but we're just going to get our last few comments or questions here. Uh, so if you do have anything, make sure to sneak it in real quick before we end our live today. Um, but I do see Amber saying, where can I get the aloe vera lotion? So right now we are out of stock of the aloe vera lotion. So I'm really sorry if that's one that you've fallen in love with. Um, from what I'm aware of, we have ordered it, um, but our manufacturer is having some delays just due to sh shortages and things of that nature. Um, so we don't actually know what date we are going to be getting it back in stock. Um, but it is something that we have ordered and we are waiting on just as eagerly as you are. Um, but that aloe vera lotion would be on our website, wowskinscience.com. And then it's in the category uh, body moisturizers. Um, you'll be able to find all of our body lotions and body butters in that section, as well as there is a Thai massage oil in that section as well. Uh, but thank you, Amber. Um, I do apologize the fact that we are out of stock, and I do believe we have been out of stock of that product for a while, uh, but we are hoping that the shortages of supplies go away relatively soon and we can get those products back out to you as soon as we can. Okay, let's see if we have any other questions. Okay, so I see Ronnie is saying, is it true that cold water hair rinse is better than warm rinse? It is. Um, when it comes to like washing your hair, um, as long as it's either warm or cold, um, washing you can do either or. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to do hot water uh, just because that can irritate your hair's cuticles. Um, but finishing your wash with a cold blast of some kind is always, always recommended. So cold water is super, super good for locking in um, your moisturize, your moisture from the conditioner or if you are washing your body. It's also great because it's going to close all your pores. Um, the best way I like to think about hair strands is as if they are like, a shingled roof. So you have the hair strand itself and then around the hair strands core there's just these little shingle like things um, and when you color treat your hair or do something like that essentially what they do is they lift those shingles do their treatment and then they lay those shingles back down but when you have really damaged irritated hair those shingles are lifted and doing something like a cold water rinse is just helping lay those shingles back down. It's helping soothe your hair a little bit. Um, so that's a little bit of hair science for you. Um, <laughs> but yes, I do think it's very, very true to use cold water rinse at the end of your hair or skincare routine. Uh, it's super, super good for just locking everything in, closing those pores and closing those little shingle hair cuticles. Um, uh, da 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 da. But yeah, when it comes to just generally washing, lukewarm water is totally fine. That is very correct, um, Margaret. I see that you've responded to Ronnie's question as well. And I love it. I love seeing when you are all helping each other. Um, that is honestly amazing. I see Debbie has also answered the question. Um, but yes, cold water at the end is all you really have to make yourself suffer through. I wouldn't make you suffer through any more than that. 
Um, but thank you all for helping Ronnie out there. Um, now I do see another question from Gail. Uh, what is the best moisturizer for your face? Uh, so that honestly, it does vary quite a bit. Um, we do have a video scheduled. I think it's the first week of February. Um, it's one of our first videos in February, I think, that is walking through all of our face moisturizers. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, but for that, it honestly does vary from skin type to skin type. Uh, and we have quite a few options. So you'll be able to find something if you have oily skin, dry skin. Um, but it honestly does depend on your face care concerns because our face moisturizers do tend to be a little bit more specific when it comes to oiliness, dryness, age concerns, scarring concerns, things like that. Uh, but definitely keep an eye out for our video uh, for recommending face moisturizers that's coming in a few weeks. Uh, but thank you for your question, Gail, and I hope I at least answered it a little bit for now. I don't want to spoil the video for you that's coming later, uh, but all in all, it does depend on your specific concerns. Um, so if you want a specific recommendation, you can always give our customer service line a call, and we'd be happy to answer that for you. Alrighty, let's see if we have any other questions. Oh, we have everyone putting their favorite body butters. That's amazing. Uh, okay, so we have Wendy likes the African body butter. That's amazing. Uh, the African shea. Um, Rebecca likes the Moroccan argan oil body butter. I also am a huge fan of that one. Um, Susan likes the vitamin C, and I could go on and on and on. Well, thank you all for putting that in there. I love to hear what your favorites are. Um, also, it is really good for the higher ups to know what your favorites are um, because then we can make sure we don't run out of them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. And I see Deborah is saying we need like moisturizer, face wash creams, not like wash foam. It's not enough moisture for the face. Okay. So um, Deborah, to address your comment about needing uh, face washes that are more moisturizing, um, I do typically recommend that in your entire skincare routine, you are washing your face because that's essentially getting rid of all of the dead skin and all of the buildup. And if you're wearing makeup, anything like that, uh, but then to follow it up with a face moisturizer. Um, so that would be our face creams that we have. Super, super important to have one of those in your routine. So that's probably why you might find that your face is a little bit more on the dry side, uh, just make sure that you are including some kind of face moisturizer because uh, our face washes, uh, they aren't necessarily designed to moist moisturize your face. Uh, sure, there are some that aren't super drying, um, but the face washes are more so designed to help wash away buildup and wash away dirt and all that stuff. And then the face moisturizer is what comes in and nourishes your skin with that moisture. Uh, so I would definitely encourage you to pop a face cream into your skincare routine. Um, now I see Deborah is saying vitamin E and olive oil. Oh, are the best body butters. That's awesome. I love that everyone actually put their favorite body butters in the comments. Um, okay, so I have Angela asking, when will the 10 in 1 apple vinegar, apple cider vinegar tonic spray be back? So that one, it is a similar situation as the aloe vera uh, body lotion. It is one of those ones that just because of um, shortages within our manufacturing uh, company, uh, they aren't fully able to produce these products quite yet. They are something that we've ordered. We're just waiting for them to be able to actually make them and have everything that's needed for those products. Um, it's very unfortunate that these shortages are happening, uh, but we do have to work with what we got, and we are hoping that we'll be able to bring these products to you very, very soon. Um, but rest assured, we have ordered them. We are just waiting for uh, those to become available again. And I do apologize again that these this is another product that's been out of stock for quite some time. Um, if you're looking for something that's kind of similar, we have our Coconut Perfecting Mist. Um, it's pretty similar uh, when it comes to helping with skincare. Um, I'm not sure if you were using it also for your hair or not, but if you're looking for something that's similar for the hair, the 10 in 1 um, hair revitalizer is really good for that as well. Um, now, I do see a lot more people putting what their favorite body butters are. That's so amazing. Um, and then I see Amber saying, I looked but could not find it on the app. 
Okay, and I'm assuming that's referring to something that's out of stock. Um, so our app does tend to only have the products that are in stock. If you're looking to be notified for products that are out of stock, to be notified when they are available again, uh, make sure that you are going on to wowskinscience.com, going to the products page, and there's a little green button on the side that says notify when available. Click on that and it will just ask for your email or phone number and then you'll get a notification when those products become available again. Okay, so I see another question from Angela saying, also I've seen baby and kid products and some different things on the India website. Do you think that you will be getting those products eventually? Um, I am hoping so, but I'll be honest, I'm not privy to that information. I don't fully know um, if that is something that they're interested in. Um, I've heard rumors of it here and there, but uh, I can't concrete, concretely say whether we will or won't. Um, but there definitely has been interest. You're not alone in that, Angela. Um, but you can still use our regular products on kids. I wouldn't go as far to use them on babies um, just because they're not like uh, tear proof and those types of things. Like if you were to accidentally get it in their eyes, um, that would be a very upset baby. Uh, <laughs> but for kids and stuff like that, you can totally use our products on them. Um, I do typically recommend just to dilute it a little bit because they can be pretty strong formulas when it comes to children's hair. Um, so just add a little bit of water before you put it throughout their hair um, or their skin if you're doing a body wash or something like that. Um, but yes, I do apologize. I can't concretely answer that question for you, Angela, um, but there has been expressed interest throughout. You're not alone. <laughs> okay, let's see. Is it true that y'all are coming out with lavender shampoo and conditioner from Wendy? Um, so Wendy, same thing. I'm not I haven't heard anything about that, um, so I'm not super uh, aware of that happening. So definitely keep an eye out. You never know when something's announced. Um, but uh, we did just announce our green tea shampoo and conditioner, which are pretty amazing. Um, but from what I'm aware of, there hasn't been any whisperings of a lavender uh, shampoo and conditioner. But for sure, keep your eye out. You never know. Uh, but thank you for that question, Wendy. Alrighty, so I do believe that is all of our questions. Let me see if I have any more. <laughs> okay. I love that uh, people are <laughs> agreeing with Wendy's comment that a lavender shampoo and conditioner would be great. I'm not gonna lie, I, I agree with that. I think it'd be super cool. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. Is the apple cider vinegar shampoo good? I love the apple cider vinegar shampoo. I think it's really great to use as like a once a month, not once a month, once a week <laughs> detox. Um, but it does depend on your hair type. Uh, so if you're someone with super, super dry hair, I typically would encourage you to go with one of our more moisturizing uh, shampoos. Uh, but if you're someone who has oily hair or has a lot of buildup in your hair, like products or chemicals, um, I would recommend the apple cider vinegar shampoo. Uh, but to be totally honest, it just depends on what your specific uh, hair care concerns are uh, and what your hair care needs are. Uh, but I personally love the apple cider vinegar one to use as like um, a detoxing product. I use other shampoos as my main wash and then about once a week I'll use the apple cider vinegar one just to get any kind of buildup that I might have missed along the way rinsed out. Uh, but I really like that product myself and we have hundreds of amazing reviews about it. So if you don't want to take my word for it, we have hundreds of customers that have left their kind words on the products page at wowskinscience.com. Uh, but thank you so much for that question, Patsy. Okay, so I think that was our last question there. So I really do appreciate all of the sharing and going along with me, humoring me when I asked for your favorite body butters and all of your questions. And of course, if any more do come up as you're thinking at home or anything like that, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments or you can give our customer service line a quick phone call and someone will be there to help you out. Um, 
And just a reminder for that 10% off discount code that you can use to get 10% off everything in your order. It's not limited on what products you can get it for, uh, but that's 10% off everything in your order. And that is all capital letters, no spaces, Shay, just like my name. And I do see a few more comments question coming in. Uh, so let's see here, just before I let you all go, um, I see someone asking, I have very dry skin and I need recommendations for products for my skin. Um, so for that, I would definitely recommend to pop back through the video. Um, so start off, you're gonna wanna make sure you're exfoliating. So for that, I always recommend the Uptan face and body scrub. Um, and then you're gonna wanna be doing like spot treatments for anywhere that has uh, excessive irritation uh, with something like a vitamin C serum. That's what I typically recommend. Um, Follow it up with some kind of sunscreen. We don't sell any sunscreen at this time. So just whichever uh, line or product that you like, uh, make sure you're throwing SPF into your skincare routine. And last but not least, a moisturizer, which is super, super important. Um, so for the moisturizer, you could go with body lotion or body butter. For super, super dry skin, I typically recommend the body butters after every shower or every body wash. Um, and then if you want something for every morning, the Shea and Cocoa Butter is really good for really, really dry skin. Uh, so I hope I helped answer your recommendation uh, there. And then I see a few other comments here. Okay, so I have uh, Teresa asking, which shampoo is best for promoting hair growth? So for that, we do have three different shampoos that we typically recommend to help stimulate and prevent hair loss. Uh, stimulate hair growth and prevent hair loss. Um, so for that, we have the apple cider vinegar, which I typically recommend for oily hair. Um, there's the coconut milk, which is really good for dry straight hair. And then the Moroccan argan oil, which is really good for dry curly hair. That's the short of it. Uh, but if you are interested in hearing more information, I have another one of these lovely little videos uh, called hair care recommendations. And it goes a little bit more into depth there. Uh, about all of the different products, uh, but those are the three shampoos I recommend to help uh, stimulate hair growth and prevent hair loss. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, I just see people like answering others' questions, and that's amazing. Thank you all for the support of each other, as well as me staying here. Um, I see Jasmine said, help me. Um, if there's anything that we can help you with, uh, make sure that you are reaching out to our customer service line. So that is from anything right down to needing someone on the phone as you place an order just because you're not super tech savvy and you just want someone there as support in case anything happens, all the way to um, you need to you've lost a product or something like that, a product derived damage, like we can help you. So <laughs> definitely make sure to reach out to our customer service line there, Jasmine, um, if you are needing any kind of assistance. Um, and then I see Karen saying, what is the best shampoo for dried ends? Uh, so once again, I do go more into depth uh, for that within our hair care recommendation video. Um, but when it comes to dry ends, I would just say to go with one of our moisturizing shampoos. We have quite a few different options for that one. Uh, you could go with the red onion shampoo. You could go with the rose shampoo. You could go with the coconut milk shampoo, the Moroccan argan oil shampoo. All of them are really good for getting moisture back into your hair. Uh, but as I mentioned, I go more in depth in the hair care recommendation video. So I'd recommend for you to jump over there and take a quick watch. Uh, and I just, I differentiate all of them a little bit better. Um, and I see a few more questions coming in. Um, now, I do just want to let everyone know, we do have a general Q&A next week as well. Uh, so if any other questions come to mind after this video, uh, you can hold it until next Thursday and you can have a chance to um, get your name put in for a draw. So. I would recommend that if you do have any other questions that come up after this video, maybe hold on to it until next week and you can have a chance to win a prize with that. Uh, but I will answer the questions that have already been asked here. Um, and of course, if you do have one that you want to ask today, by all means, go for it. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay. 
Okay, I have someone asking, my hair is getting oily the second day after washing um, and starts to feel and start to feel small pimple-like bumps. Okay, I can't fully address the pimple-like bumps because that does seem like potentially a bigger issue and I would recommend to consult with a medical professional like a dermatologist or something of that nature. Um, but when it comes to like having oily hair after the second day wash, that's kind of a nice sweet spot of you are in between dry or oily. So you can kind of go with whichever product it is that suits your fancy, whichever one you want. Um, but I would recommend for you to also jump over to the hair care recommendation video. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, it's just a matter of scrolling uh, through the recommended videos uh, and you will find it. It is pretty early on, so don't be surprised if you're scrolling. Um, for a little bit, uh, but the hair care recommendation video is what I would recommend for you to just take a quick look at uh, to figure out what shampoo would be the best for you, just because you're in that weird um, sweet spot of you could go oily or you could go dry options, because yours is the second day is when your hair gets to feel oily, and that's pretty standard. Um, so I would recommend for you to watch that video and see which one rings truest to you. <laughs> um, now I see... Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, I answered that question. Okay, so Jasmine from earlier that said help me went into a little bit more depth. Here we have the apple cider vinegar slash coconut milk. Had to cut off all my hair and my skin is extremely eczema prone. Okay. So by the sounds of it, you're looking for something that is gentle. Okay, so it does seem like you have a very, very specific situation when it comes to your hair and skincare uh, concerns. Uh, when it comes to the eczema, I would recommend that you are moisturizing daily if it's on your like skin. Um, but if it's like scalp, um, it m might be good for you to look at the apple cider vinegar shampoo just because it does help with that detoxing of any kind of dead skin that might be built up up there. Uh, but it does seem like yours is very, very specific. So it might be wise to also consult with a medical professional um, specifically because of that eczema. Uh, but if you are looking to have a bit more of a conversation about what products would be a good fit for you, definitely feel free to give us a call um, and we can have a little bit more of an open discussion about that uh, just because I don't want to reveal any kind of information about you or ask any more personal questions here where everyone can see. Um, but definitely give our customer service line a call. Um, oh, okay. I missed someone's comment. Okay, let me see if I can find you again. I apologize. Okay. Oh, I did answer that question about the um, your hair starts to get oily on the second day, so you're in between the dry and oily space. Uh, so you could realistically go with most of our shampoos. Any of them would probably be a good fit for you. Um, but when it comes to the small pimples, that does seem like something that you might want to consult a medical professional about, uh, specifically like a dermatologist or something like that. Um, and if you are wanting to hear a little bit more about all of our shampoos and conditioners, uh, just to figure out which one would be a good fit for you, um, I would recommend for you to watch our hair care recommendation video. Uh, I go into depth with every single one of our shampoos and conditioners in that video, uh, so you can kind of uh, figure out what each one does and uh, what would fit you best. Um, but I do believe we have reached all of our comments. Jasmine, I do really encourage you to give our customer service line a call um, just because it is hard to piece together everything um, in your comments. Uh, so definitely give us a call. We can have an open conversation about what we think would be a good fit for you. Um, but definitely, definitely, if you have any more questions, and this is to everyone, if you have any more questions, concerns, or anything like that, uh, definitely make sure to leave them in the comments and we'll still get to them once this live has ended. Uh, or you can also hold on to those to join us next week for our monthly check-in Q&A. And this month we do have a giveaway going on. So for every question, you get your name put in a draw uh, for 
a secret prize that I won't tell you quite yet. Um, but if any other questions do come up, uh, and our customer service phone number is 855-790-9229. So I look forward to talking to you, Jasmine. And of course, once again, leave your questions and comments below. And remember to use that 10% discount code, all capital letters, no spaces, Shay. And until next time, thank you all for joining me. Bye-bye.